game on as far as Team Secret and Victory Gaming are concerned, which means handing you over to our commentary team for our final series of the night. Toby Wan and Malini, it's all yours. Uh, discrepancy, right? TA scales a lot better. Puck generally just, you know, he, he can get, he can snowball a lot more, whereas TA benefits way more from a passive style where you just farm up Ancients and do Roche if the other team is doing something silly. So... I would say that Vici definitely have the late game. Uh, I would say Terraplane is also just like really hard to deal with in the late game, especially with their lineup that does not have significant of amount of AOE. Tree grab does not count. <laughs> we all we want that account, Puppy. He's just dropping really low here in mid. So much damage on line with a plus 54. It will be enough. I Puck actually will be able to get a revenge, but. I did not think he was actually going to die from that hit. Return. It's not to make his life problematic, it's to make the TA's life easy. Because TA. TA versus Ogre is really bad. Like, you can take off all the reflection charges. Are going to get a revenge? Gaps off. In through yep. the side. Pick him up. Toss him back over again. And then it's just all about a good club. And Puppy gets his revenge. So, a lot of them doing something. And you... Okay, Fada. Oh, actually, he's in trouble. Space created by Yapsaw. Has to put the sleep onto himself. Fada goes for the tree line. Still has that purification. Taking the time to salve up to. Making it sure this metamorphosis of paparazzi is as wasted as much as they can. Yapsaw has his power to cancel. Fade falls. He knows he's dead, but in comes Puppy. If they can get a revenge on a paparazzi, they'll make it worthwhile. But the storm from Lanham. Everyone goes to sleep for the moment as paparazzi runs down south. Trying to escape from this gank, but he's salving up into the trees. They need to cancel this. More loose to choose from. Puppy so low. Purification's on the Fada. So he can set his ground. Do the damage into Paparazzi, but it doesn't work when Fenrir claims a double kill as that Bane picking up the supports of Team Secrets off lane. Middle lane rotations coming in as Puppy and Lana get to say hello to each other. Not much should come from this as they're still fighting, I think, the tower. It's just the fact that CTY is just so low on life. Fada will end up dying to the top lane, so all that posturing doesn't do a lot. And well, I didn't say much will come from this mid lane, but Puppy is so low in CTY. They're going to look for the opportunity, and what a good time to do it. Yapsaw, it's too uh, he late. Know the Observer Ward. They need to see up the hill. Maybe they can at least get the pick up on the TA. If they observe what the hillside it will work, Lana soaks up the smoke gank. Too. Especially since they got buffed. Yeah, 250. I, I don't think I've seen people take the talent, but two of psionic trap talent might be worth considering this game. The Fiend script over on Ace. He'll break free, still has a lot of one shots up his sleeve. Strength trend more fought, but what does he really do? He tosses, he's just trying to go for the kill onto Bane, realizing he's dead, but the nightmare! What a situation! Ace will take it off him, tosses the tree. Just farmed. You know, and they now were, has 5.5k gold. They weren't looking for the sacks, they were looking for they the were. TA. They didn't find her. Yeah, the TA was actually farming off to the right, so props to Ori to farm me in a very safe place. And Paparazzi left and pushed bottom lane. The reason they don't expect the stacks is just because of how active the supports have been. The support them is showing the majority of the time, so, you know, they can't be everywhere. And they've been on the map, so they can't have been stacking at the same time. Stomp's coming in, the TA trap slowed him down just enough. They can actually get that sleep off. Yapsol wants to help out, and all he can do is pick up the Elder Titan. But it's all a little bit too late. He'll end up stealing. The Astral Spirit. I think he can kill them. Uh, it's going to be close. If you catch the TA without refraction up, <laughs> maybe. Lanham just... having a little bit of trouble. So this will work when you've got Fada there to help out. Now he has enough damage to get through the ET. Meanwhile, Puck, Dream Call on bottom, wants to jump away. Puppy. Ah, oh, Fiend's gripped up. Paparazzi will take care of him. We've seen them want to dive down towns before in the Fiend Crypt from Fenrir. They'll commit anything they've got, mainly because Paparazzi's also here this time. His last attack will be able to reach Yapsaw. Roshan being started up now by the Templar Assassin. Ace and Puppy are pretty nearby. Yeah, this positioning is pretty good for them. It's nighttime. They don't have vision over here. This could be the they play got, that they need. They, they need got vision. No jump in, though. They, yeah, they need to see inside the pit. The Observer Ward knows they're watching. Here comes the park and in through the side. Ace with the avalanche toss. Rujan killed by the rain. Who gets the Aegis? The Immortal Ace. They actually get swapped out of life. Paparazzi snatches the Aegis. The Immortal will be the Templar Assassin. They had to try something, but the Sunder kicks in. Ace has no more life to work with. And Puppy is caught on the wrong side of the river. Maybe there could be some revenge. They pick up a throw down on the Broodmaster. He was silent, so he couldn't get the split off. Puppy did eventually die. That just makes it very difficult to keep them up. Most of the metamorphosis has been wasted, so they're going in and doing exactly the same thing again. <gasps> oh, Fiend Crypt Fenrir cancelled it! Thinking he was a little bit worried to be stolen. Right now, it's only Refraction that was stolen. Picked up and thrown in very, very deep. Precept, damn, he's so tanky. And the Nightmare with the Splitter. They've actually got enough space created. The all flies forward. Fenrir, CTY goes after him and claims him. A one-for-one one trade-off. 
But you still get the tier two tower. Top tier two tower remains barely alive for VG. Oh, he got the silent trap damage on uh, coming out from VG. It's yeah. going to come out very, very soon. And mass BKB is coming out from VG. So I think that, you know, the charts are going to swing the secrets way and it looks pretty hopeful. But you have to consider this next fight with the BKBs and the Aegis or with just the BKBs, how it is going oh, to go Poppy. for them. You're in too deep. CTY is the name. Hood, no, no, Poppy can really get himself out of this one. And Fenrir, oh, he's going to get the Fiend Trip as well. CTY wasn't really sure if he should be involved in this. They were setting up for a gank on bottom. That's just a really dangerous place. At the same time, you don't really expect that Reserve War to be there. When and CTY wants help on bottom, Paparazzi has TP down here to defend the lane. They're not really not letting, like, Team Secret have any of these towers. But it's a smoke gang. Four men together. And Paparazzi is walking right into it. Yep, so straight pick up. Not the illusion. They toss down the tree, though, which was the real one. And now flip him like a pancake. Plain. Now VG Gaming, they're going to smoke up. Five men in it. They're not going into Roshan, however. They're going to go straight past him. And wrap around the side, the circle comes out to say, let's check our own jungle. Fardus the closest, he'll break the smoke with Puppy and the jump in from Young Eleven. They'll get that silence off. It's that fresh orc and over on Ori, denying Fada any presence in this fight. And now the nightmare continues for Puppy. But the counter push comes on top lane. CTY is attacking the tier three tower. Yamsaw will be able to get himself a little, di little bit of distance from Young Eleven. I mean, he's just a puck though. He is just a puck. Ace is just a tiny as well. Paparazzi already with that sun that's stealing so much life. And Yamso could do little to nothing to cancel this kind of push. And they don't even care about Roshan. So the park added some momentum towards the top that did bring Lanham back. So he's not part of this fight right now. But at the same time, it's Secret who are men's down. And they're about to be more farther. He's down for the count. Buyback does not help you in this situation when you have none. Ruby's gone as well, pushing into the tier three tower. Fortification will delay this pressure. But VG Gaming so in control of this matchup that it really doesn't matter. This is the slow walk forward. Fiend's grip from Fenrir controlling Puppy. He'll fall as well. It seems like a hopeless case, mainly because BG Gaming currently own what is secrets. And they just, you know, they, as soon as they got the PKBs in the gem, I thought it would be very, very hard for VG to lose. They like, you know, built, uh, they built, you know, a little bit greedy at the start with the Midas first maybe, but after that, just, you know, full on team fight items yeah. to the point where Secret are going to have a very tough time holding this. Oh, they've actually got a full Bloodthorn as well. That's a 30 minute Bloodthorn on the Templar Assassin on top of everything else that she already has. Paparazzi, while the Aegis Demoil is on TA, he's got the cheese. It's not only Sunder, but also that cheese life. Lotus Orb, fresh pickup for Fada. It's all or nothing right now as VG Gaming, they come in through the top. A quick silence for the Templar Assassin. CTY doing what he can, but Young Eleven, he's in the back lines with the Templar Assassin. Yep, so gets the pick up and throw down. Got an Aegis will find protection, and Ari really learned. But remember, this is the Aegis Immortal. He'll have that trigger, and the cost is too great for Team Secret to defend, and it is impossible to defend. Puppy will call it, and VG Gaming take game one of this winner's bracket semi-final. So Lanem and Eleven were certainly the MVPs for me. Lanem just drew so much attention away from the TA so that the Ogre couldn't really dominate her. And then Eleven solo killing the Tiny twice and just really messed up Ace's game. Yeah, it really did. It's great to see that level of coordination coming from... The only thing they have to deal with the Storm is like one Dragonite stun and one Sanking stun. As soon as he gets the Lincolns, the game is going to get, get really, really hard for them. They should have won a little bit earlier then, perhaps, for Vici. <laughs> now they can go for the Burrow Strike. You don't have another pounce just yet, Fada. Really? Kraken Shell lets it break free, but it still won't be enough. At the same time, the battle was happening on the bot lane, so technically with our split screen, we were actually watching both engagements. But it was Lana who gets the first one in on the top lane before. Exactly certain if he can get this kill. With the help of the SD, maybe they can. Three heroes coming over. Yamsol waiting on the high ground. They start with the battery assault. Young Eleven trapped inside of it. He'll repel. Give himself some protection. And now SD. They turn for the fight. And maybe they have enough. Puppy. Fire is striked up. Having a lot of damage from purification. Aids with the early point up in Gus. Just pushing him back. And Puppy. He's dying to the SD illusions. Fenrir trapped inside the cogs once more. Another hero locked in with the Absol. But Ace. He doesn't want to fight this one. In fact, he's just TPing out to safety. 
Yep, so now makes his play up. They need to get the cog block off, and Dragon Tail's gonna make that difficult. A vortex, no point in it, so no pullback available. Can just slow him down with that overload. And there it is, the cog trap in. Ori can't go anywhere. One charge is up. Dragon Tail, the burn from the cog. It's not enough, and no level six on Storm. Well, actually allow him to salve up. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, the double gust puppy getting some space on this one. But uh, in two seconds' time, you'll let Barra strike and puppy will die unless he can dodge it in the trees. But it will not happen. Extra puppy illusions created. Uh, yeah, Storm's winning, but he has Drow Aura. Yeah. And, but it's getting popular on bottom. Just six, but here we go again. There's the disruption, the perfect fire strike time. Make sure there's no gust back. Purification, such heavy damage on Ace. And now Benry has got even more Dros to fight for the cause. They look to move forward. Yapsor and Puppy forced out of the lane. And the SD Illusion is actually currently chipping away at Yapsor. He has seven one shots up his sleeve and ball lightning available. But that's not enough mana to get all the way back to the tower, so Fenrir is going to start with disruption. Cash is coming out as well, line of fire strike timing. This synergy has been absolutely perfect between the two supports. They need a little bit more damage, and they just don't have it, even with the caustic, maybe the pop with it. Ah, that fire strike, that'll do it. Closing the distance, diving the tower. Yamsaw broken it in. They want to get some level of revenge. Repel is there for, for a young 11. Will pull his way out of the cog Lanham. Ready for another fire strike. Ready for a space creation. Yamsaw is low. The fire strike's there. They'll take the bounty root from him. Yamsaw will pop to the caustic, let alone everything else is throwing at him. Storm and Clock fall for this. Disgust of how the lanes went. Oh, and they popped two smokes. Oh no. Wow. Burned two smokes. Ace was still farming up the ancients. Yep, so I was going to call the sorry mark. And yeah, this is problematic for him. Fenrir, this defensive disruption. Dodges the dual press, the false TPing in. But then the purification and the repel. Fenrir will live long enough to even kill off Yep, so far as Rabbit. It's rather effective, but still a worth saving. Young Eleven's got too much heal. Another forest right from Lanham. I swear Team Seeker has been more much stunned than alive in this game. Puppy CP won't work. Purification will kill him off. And VG Gaming, 11 kills to 3. Momentum galore. Another disastrous sign of a dry lineup when you're losing towers and you don't even have any T1 of your own. Something is going to go their way finally. Fenrir will get popped. I mean... But is Kaya the best I, alternative? I, honestly, oh, like... Oh, Ace, goodbye. He's a little bit poor right now, so he doesn't really have too much of a choice. Wow. Well, got burned. And CTY getting a little bit of mana back, and Paparazzi is on the hunt. He won't find the target. In fact, the pings are coming out a quick jump away. That's Puppy who pings that one. Yeah, it's all. But just about all. Looks over towards the SK. They just want to get one kill. And Lanham is going to be in the best reward down so he couldn't hide. Fada creates some space with that Ravage. They kill off the SK, turn their attention towards Paparazzi. They've already burned the Ravage as well as the mech of Fada. It is time to retreat if you're Team Seekers. The Dwarf can cap three. But now the Guardian Angel is there. So much regeneration, so much sustain for VG. They move closer with the pounce forward. Paparazzi as you pounce over the dead corpse of Father. And all Storm can do is just ball away. However, part of it will be too lucky. Ari is the door of the backline. The corner will try to bump CGY just for Ari has died pretty quickly. The destruction is there. SD will create some space, but he doesn't have enough to get away. Now do they have enough to jump for shot? Yapso creating space. Moving forward on the Fenrir. Paparazzi bounces over. The FB Center may be tied rapid as Mech. It gives them now the sustain for Team Secret. A massive fight. These are the mistakes. The Molini was mentioning about VG Gaming. And here comes Paparazzi. Sentry Ward reveals it, but he's already broken the tie up. The Silver is going into work. There's no ravage. The Macrofire is nice. Fada, the live he's gonna sustain for a while. But a while is not long enough. It's lovely that Paparazzi can go glass cannon build because he has a tell. He went for the agility and the attack speed, so just all out right click. They're going in again. The Sentry Ward's revealing Observ Ward on the hill. They can push him back. Ace in a good position just to cannon fire from the rear with Yamso. The call drops down. Oh, 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 the first damage is there from the, from the Revenge to help bring down the Omnite. So he's gone for the count, but Paparazzi can now be free to do what he wants. He's going through Ace. Maybe not so much when CTY once again is into the back lines. It's like CTY and Paparazzi just want to ignore that each other exists. 
But he may have, may not have a choice. Right now, CTY has lost every teammate he has. Paparazzi with a triple kill. And VG with a creep wave coming down mid lane can at least force buybacks, if not do some heavy damage to the tier three. Mm, glorious plus 120 agility. Echo Saber Arcane Rune, pretty good. So. <laughs> Got enough mana for it, so hey, why not? So Dude. JB doesn't have the Remnant talent. Top Rod just does so much damage right now. <laughs> so stupid him to beat that. Melee is gone. Is under yeah, Paparazzi has over 250 damage 23 minutes into the game. Obviously, the yes, is going to start to shift again. Hawk shot, gap shot. Well, we fought this place before. We're going to fight it again. Fenrir, he's going to fall. CTY jumping in deep and breaks the Lincoln Spear. Now, Paparazzi going for a little bit more. And oh, support is there. They were going for both targets. A little bit of greed, or a lot of greed. A mountain of greed. Uh, he still had all the stacks. So right now, he's at 37. Yeah, that's... 24 minutes in, they're realizing this is a hopeless case. Team Secret get 2 0 by VG Gaming as VG Gaming will secure a top three position here in the Perfect World Masters. Lon M is a top four. His drafts have been.